Hello viewers and welcome to my channel CCM Drummer. My name is Matthew Jackson and in today's video I want to talk about whether or not churches should pay their musicians. If you were to do a search on YouTube you'll find at least I found 11 videos that address this topic and basically I found videos along the, the full spectrum of this topic. Uh, on one end of the spectrum, you have, no, it should be strictly volunteer, they should not be paid. And then the other end of the spectrum is, yes, they should be paid. So what I want to do today is I want to give my input on this, being that I'm a musician, I've been doing it for 35 years, I've played in lots of churches, both as a volunteer and as a paid professional, so I'd like to offer my insight on this subject and weigh in. But before I do that, please feel free to like, share, comment, and subscribe to my channel. When you do that, that helps, my, grow, me, helps grow my channel. Also, if you watch this video until the end, the YouTube algorithms uh, keep track of how long a viewer views a particular video, and the longer it's viewed, that also pushes it out to the feed and helps uh, acquire more views and helps grow the channel as well. So yeah, I'd appreciate if you do all those things for me. Anyway, back to the topic of should musicians get paid or not? That is not really a yes or no cut and dry question. You just can't, it's not black and white. Now I'll tell you why. There's basically three governing parameters when you talk about this matter. First, you got to talk about the resources that the church has, that any particular given church would have. Obviously, the smaller churches are going to have less cash flow than the larger churches. That only stands to, re stands to reason because of their size, but also uh, is tithing uh, taught, is it encouraged, and is it practiced among the majority of the members. That also is a factor. I've seen some very small to medium-sized churches make all their budget requirements and obligations because all of their uh, members, or most of them anyway, tithe. So a lot of there's a lot of financially solvent churches that are solvent by virtue of their members tithing. So that so that all factors in. Now the other issue when you talk about uh, paying um, musicians in the churches, is the talent pool within the church. How big is the talent pool? So let's say you have a church that's, I don't know, let's just throw out a number, 200 people. Let's say you got 200 members in your church, or you have 200 people that attend regularly. That's your, that's your average Sunday attendance or whatever. Well, of those 200 people, how many can play an instrument? Okay. Now, I've been to small churches like that where they were able, they had enough talent in their talent pool where they were uh, able to uh, uh, field an entire praise team. We're talking about drums, bass, keyboards, and guitar, and then your vocals. Okay, and then I've been to other churches about that same size that maybe they were they're lucky to have a guitar player and a piano player, and that's it. You know, so it varies. It it just just because you have two hundred people or three hundred or one hundred doesn't mean your your talent pool is going to be deep enough to field an entire praise team and and, and do contemporary praise songs. Uh, also, another thing you got to consider is the skill level within your talent pool. Let's say you've got 200 people at your church, and let's say you've got enough musicians to field an entire praise team to, to, to have all the positions. But what's the skill level of these musicians? Are they mediocre? You know? So... Uh, and, and in most cases, that is the case. You just have a bunch of mediocre musicians. Now, most pastors that I've talked to 
understand that in order for their church to grow and to see positive growth, and that's very difficult in this day and age when you have church attendance going down. It's on the decline. And a lot of that had to do with the COVID pandemic when people could attend church on, on the internet, go to virtual church, okay? And uh, people in general now uh, do a lot of things virtually. And, and so, so the, the church is now in competition with that technology. And to get uh, people into their church, a lot of pastors understand that they have to have a red hot praise team in order to attract members and people coming to their church. They can't rely on the strength of their, of their ability to deliver messages and good sermons alone. They're going to need a good Red Hot Praise Band. In addition to that, they're going to need a good youth department as well. Those are your three major factors, really, when the, the, the most pastors understand that they need to have in order to, to grow a church. In fact, if I was a young upstart pastor myself and I didn't have a church and I wanted to start a church, the first thing I would do is find some musicians and assemble a good praise band. I'd do that first before I looked for a building or a, or a strip center thing where you could rent some space and start a church. I, I would look I would look to, to assemble a praise band first and get, get a good PA system, get good musical instruments. I'd get that taken care of before I'd look for a place to hold services. That's just me. So, um, but here's the deal. Okay, and then the third parameter. So the first parameter was the church resources. The second parameter is the church talent pool, its depth and quality. The third parameter is the church culture. Uh, that has a lot to do with their attitude towards music. Uh, the form of government. What form of government does the church take on? Uh, some of these independent denominational churches, the pastor calls all the shots. Okay, There is no constitution and bylaws uh, that govern how the church is governed. The pastor is kind of like the dictator and what he says goes. And if you don't like the way he's running the church, you vote with your feet and leave and go to another church. Now, so that has a, that's a two-edged sword. On one hand, yeah, the pastor calls all the shots, but let's say if the music team needs a new PA system or a drum set or keyboards, whatever, Okay, whatever piece of equipment the music team needs, well, all the music team has to do is convince the pastor. If the pastor's convinced, he'll go down to the music store with you and write the check and buy whatever it is you need. He doesn't need to put this up for a vote before the congregation. He does not need to go through the uh, praise and worship committee or whatever, because some churches, uh, when, you, when you buy a PA system, uh, the, the Constitution and bylaws dictate that the, the congregation um, votes on it, or maybe the Board of Elders. So all churches uh, have different forms of government, so that has a lot of bearing into, um, you know, uh, so those same governing powers will be the same governing powers that determine whether or not a musician might get paid. Uh, also, how many services a week does a church have? You know, the church I'm attending has churches on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. Three services a week. Some churches only have services one service a week. It varies. Some ch churches have Saturday night services. So, so the number of services, the number of musicians, so there's a lot of variables. So that's why you just can't say, yes, a, a musician should get paid or no, they shouldn't. You know, you just can't because of all these variables that you have to figure in. Now, here's, here's the bottom line to all this. Your music, the quality of your music team is only going to be as good as what you put into it. So if you have mediocre talent, all right, 
then you're going to get a mediocre product. If you want a red hot praise band that's really on the cutting edge and really, really good, you're going to need to get really, really good musicians. So you got to ask yourself, well, how do we get those? Now, um, most churches that I've been to, more the medium sized to larger churches, the music director is a very, very key person in uh, establishing the quality of the music that you're going to be getting, the music director. Now, a lot of music directors for a lot of your larger churches uh, are very, very good musicians themselves. Many of them will have degrees in music. Many of them will, can know how to play multiple instruments, including the keyboards. They'll know how to do vocal training. They'll know how to evaluate talent. They'll know how to direct and coach their talent and encourage. So if you've got a really good music director that, that, that understands all the facets of running a music program and can direct and coach and teach their talent. You've got to have a music director that can give guidance on drums, guitar, bass, keyboards, but also vocals that's knowledgeable of these different instruments, uh, that knows how to read music. Uh, can your musicians play to a click track? You know, uh, especially your drummer. So you got to be good to be able to read music uh, because I worked for a, a music director that wanted to, he, he wrote a prelude to a particular song um, and he, there was no pre-recording of that. So he wrote it out, wrote, the, wrote a score for it and he gave us all the scores and says, play that. So you have to be a good musician to be able to sight read and play what your music director writes for you. And on the other hand, you need to be a good ear musician because uh, you got to be able to play by ear and improv, do improvisation, ad lib. You got to be able to know how to do that as well. I've met musicians, I've met piano players that can play anything that, that's that's on paper that you put in front of them. But then when you ask them to uh, modulate and, and just uh, follow them and ad lib and do some improv, they can't do it. And then I've had keyboard players and guitar players that can, they can play by ear and improv and ad lib all day long, but then you put a sheet of music in front of them and say, play that, they can't do that, okay? So you gotta be able to do both, okay? So again, your music department really is dictated by how much you're willing to spend and invest to get those quality people. And it starts at the top with a very, very good music director, okay, that's knowledgeable in all the facets of music. Another key role in a music program is a song leader. Just because you can sing and play an instrument doesn't mean you can lead the singing in a church service. They're two different things. Now, in most cases that I've seen, most of the time your music director is the song leader. They'll be the ones singing and leading the congregation in song, okay? But I've been in churches too where the music director was the rhythm guitar player and he delegated out the, 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 the song leader part to one of his musicians that was very good at it. So, you know, it just varies, but those are very two key roles, the music director and then the song leader. Now, a lot of churches will call your music director maybe the minister of music, uh, music pastor. A lot of churches call them worship pastor, and they'll call the person leading the singing the worship leader, whatever. But yeah, you've got to have good people in those roles. And if it takes uh, paying them to do that, uh, you, now it's not uncommon for the music director. That's a, usually a full-time job in a church, especially a church that's medium to large size, you know, because they're going to be, uh, yeah, that's a full-time job. And then they can take on uh, church administrative duties as well as music duties. And then they supervise the volunteer musician, many of them who will be mediocre, but that's the role of a music director. How do you take 
mediocre musicians and make them be better at, while they're being volunteers? Or do you just want to pay some paid professionals? So there's so many variables, so many factors when you're, when you're talking about this subject. But um, like, again, I've, I've done both. I've done it for money and for volunteer. And uh, I, the reason I play in church as a volunteer is because it's fun. You know, I mean, obviously we're doing it for the Lord and uh, must never lose sight of that, but it's fun for me as well. We, we have a good group of cats that can play well and I have a blast. But the moment it ceases to be fun for me, that's when I'll quit. As simple as that, whether they pay me or not. You know, it's got to be fun. It's got to be exciting. It's got to be challenging, you know. Uh, and if it's, it doesn't have those things, if I get bored, I'll want to leave. And, you know, I have a YouTube channel, as you well know. I've got drum covers. More people watch my drum covers than see me play in church anyway. So church is a fun thing for me. In addition, yeah, I want to I want to honor the Lord and edify the people in the congregation and, and help them in their praise experience to the Lord. So that's important as well. So anyway, that's basically all I have to say about whether or not musicians should get paid. And again, it depends on all those variables and it depends on how good do you want your praise band to be? What are your, what are, what are your expectations of your praise band? And the more expectations, then you're probably going to have to entertain the concept of, um, you know, budgeting more money to pay the musicians. And when I was getting paid, I wasn't getting paid all that much. I really wasn't making much of a profit. I was just breaking even because of the expenses involved. Because, you know, if you have to make more trips to church for rehearsal, if I have to lug my gear and set it up, and then at the end of the service, tear it down and load it back in my vehicle, you know, all those factors factor in. And yeah, if I'm expected to, now if the church already has a drum set there, then all I gotta do is show up with my sticks, you know, and I only have one rehearsal, you know, that's the, that's before the service. Yeah, yeah, I don't have a problem being a volunteer for that. But if you act, expect me to go to multiple rehearsals and lug my gear, yeah, I'll be expecting some compensation, you know. So again, you got to take all these factors into consideration. So thank you for watching and thank you for staying with me till the end. And again, please subscribe to my channel, like, share, and comment. Thank you and God bless.